We start with the latest outburst at a Chandler Unified School Board meeting, a speaker going off on an anti-Semitic rant with the offensive claim that the Jews are profiting off COVID vaccines. It was met with scattered applause in the boardroom. Joining us now is Chandler Unified Governing Board Member Lindsay Love. She says not enough is being done to stem the abuse and she may have had enough. Welcome to Square Off. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I want to play the reaction of Board President Barb Mosden to that anti-Semitic speaker right after the woman spoke. Let's, let's take a listen to that. Your comments really need to be um, related to what the school board can do something about. And <laughs> this was not something that we can do something about. Um, so please, please have your comments with something that is within our jurisdiction. So we heard the school board uh, president, Barb Mosden, say that this is not something the board can do something about, meaning uh, specifically what the speaker was claiming about Jews. Was that response good enough for you? No, it wasn't. Um, however, I'd like to preface by saying that I think that Mrs. Mosden was probably taken aback and I'd like to think that the laugh and her response was more coming from nerves. Um, so I just want to extend like the best intentions to her because we haven't talked. I was not physically in the room. I was over the phone during that meeting. But I can understand from the community standpoint and being on the board and seeing this escalation into racism, anti-Semitism, transphobia, homophobia, all the stuff that's been going on since 2019, I think that our community at large has had enough of the rhetoric in our meetings and want us to do something about it to release a strong statement saying that hate is not accepted and read it continuously in meetings. And I think that our community wanted us to full stop, cut the microphone and state that anti-Semitism has no place in Chandler schools and that we are here to make sure that all of our students feel safe, especially our most marginalized. And 24 hours after this occurred, the interim Chandler School Superintendent Frank mm -hmm. Narducci did issue a statement that said in part, we strongly denounce the anti-Semitic statement made. All Chandler Unified School District students, staff, and community members deserve to feel safe, respected, and valued. So you, you began there to put this in the context of what's happened uh, over the last two years. <clears throat> Why are people speaking out, acting out like this at your school board meetings? So this has been an escalation since I got on the board in 2019. And I'm the first woman of color to be on the board and the first Democrat to actually be on our board. And so there has been this like riot, I guess, and, and protest against my presence on the board as a liberal presence as a black woman who speaks about equity and needing to pay attention to what is happening to our most marginalized students. And we have community members who feel like, because I'm speaking out against, you know, or, or speaking about LGBTQ inclusive bullying policies that I'm trying to sexualize children. My sister is the board chair of Planned Parenthood, a completely separate board that has nothing to do with Chandler Unified. And of course, the rumor is that I was elected as a part of this Planned Parenthood stunt to sexualize children to increase their abortion revenue. So it's a bunch of, of crazy things. Um, I, I'm constantly asked to step down because I'm the real racist for speaking up against the racism happening in our district. Uh, when I ran in 2018, the district was known for some pretty high profile racist incidents. And so we did have a call out from our community members, particularly the Black Mothers Forum and parents of Black Indigenous students of color to create equity initiatives and to do better. But now that the smoke is cleared, these groups, which are so-called parents groups, and it started with a, a group called Purple for Parents, and now it's kind of morphed into these Liberty Moms, they are using this as an opportunity to blast us for teaching CRT, which we're not. 
Um, and also to call us out on mask policies, which our district does not have. I wish that we did. And I, I just few vaccination rhetoric that doesn't make sense. I, and I just, so I, I do want to say, and it needs to be said. I mean, there are parents speaking out about genuine education concerns at these meetings, as well as mm -hmm. others who speak out about other things. And and these others, they do have a First Amendment right to speak, don't they? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. And I think too part of the frustration from our community when we don't speak out about these issues is that board members can't really infringe upon the free speech of community members coming in. So President Mosden really couldn't address those comments within the meetings because the law does not allow us to. Um, so we have had parents who have come in and spoke on issues to do with education and bullying, right? Um, however, the tone of these meetings has changed, especially in the last two years with COVID, right? Where our meetings have been used to speak about things that the district is not actively doing to spread hate, to spread lies. And we've had students and parents who have written in and said that the tone and the rhetoric in our meetings is scary. They don't know if their children are safe to attend our meetings or attend our schools. And that is what has been happening in our meetings. These meetings have so been that, taken over by people that are spreading misinformation. And, and that's, a, that's an important question here. If I'm a parent uh, in the district mm -hmm. or a student, mm -hmm. should this all concern me? Why should this all concern me? What goes on in these meeting rooms twice a month, perhaps? Mm -hmm. That is Yeah. A... Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think that it should concern parents, right? Because you know, they always say, like, if you're, you're not at the table, you're on the menu, right? Um, and so I think that these parents have kind of used the fact that a lot of people are staying home because of COVID, right? They, you know, see that our meetings are mostly maskless, right? And all the vaccine rhetoric. And that's keeping a lot of our parents who do not feel the same way out of the room. But unfortunately, that's all the board ever hears. And this is a pretty calculated effort that's not only happening in Chandler meetings, right? This is happening across the state and across the country, right? And so there is this peeling back of equity policies, right, that is occurring in a lot of our our school boards across the state because we only hear from these anti-CRT, anti-equity parents. And of course, whoever's in the room is, you know, who influences the board's decisions right then and there. You're up for election, uh, term ends in 2022. Will you run mm -hmm. again? At this point, I have no plans to run again. I think that we rely, especially on black women to come in and save the day, right? And I feel like these past three years, going on four years, has done a tremendous impact on my physical health and emotional health. And I need to take care of myself and my family at this point, especially with death threats, people following me in restaurants and taking pictures of my back and sending them to me, people throwing racial slurs at me, fat phobia. Um, and those are things that, you know, a person cannot take on their own, right? Um, I am one vote on the board. And of course, I get outvoted every time. And so I think that in order to have an impact in the future, it has to be off the board. And I have to fight those battles outside of the dais with a community backing. All right. Chandler Unified Governing Board Member Lindsay Love, thank you so much for joining us.